Hello everyone, my name is Ali Akbar. In my previous lecture, I have explained about the SI and CI engine four-stroke working cycle. Now moving forward, let us discuss about the engine operating cycle of two-stroke SI and CI engine. A two-stroke or two-cycle engine is a type of internal combustion engine which completes a power cycle with two stroke of the piston during only one crankshaft revolution. This is in contrast to a four-stroke engine which requires four stroke of the piston to complete a power cycle. In a two-stroke engine, the end of the combustion and the beginning of the compression happen simultaneously, with the intake and exhaust function occurring at the same time. Now before jumping to the working cycle of a SI and CI engine, let us first clear some of the basic terminology which are being used in two-stroke engine. They are first, first is intake port and second is exhaust port. As we can see in this picture, In contrary to the four stroke engine which uses inlet valve and exhaust valve which are controlled by cam and cam follower mechanism a two stroke engine employs port mechanism which doesn't require any sophisticated technique like cam and cam shaft instead all functions of intake and exhaust port are controlled solely by the piston covering and uncovering the port as it moves up and down in the cylinder third is transfer port Transfer port is simply a channel in the block of a two-stroke engine. It connects the engine crankshaft with the engine combustion chamber. Transfer port is used to transfer air-fuel mixture in case of SI engine or just air in case of CI engine from the crank's crankcase to the combustion chamber. Fourth is deflector. Deflector is nothing but a well-designed protruding shape situated on the head of the piston in a two-stroke engine. Deflector directs the fresh, air, uh, fresh intake charge into the upper part of the cylinder, pushing the residual exhaust gas down the other side of the deflector and out the exhaust port. Now, next is scavenging. Scavenging is the process of clearing or sweeping out the exhaust gas from the combustion chamber of the cylinder. It is necessary that cylinders should not have any burnt cases because they mix with the fresh incoming charge and reduces its strength. Power will loss if the fresh charge is diluted by the exhaust gases. The scavenging is necessary only in two-stroke engine, since piston does not help for clearing the burnt gas from the cylinder. Till now, there are three types of scavenging methods which are available in a two-stroke engine. They are first cross scavenging. In a cross flow engine, the transfer and exhaust port are on opposite side of the cylinder and a deflector on the top of the piston directs the fresh intake charge into the upper part of the cylinder, pushing the residual exhaust gases down the other side of the deflector and out the exhaust port. The deflector increases the piston's weight and exposed surface area, affecting piston cooling and also making it difficult to achieve an efficient combustion chamber shape. These designs have been superseded since 1960 by the loop scavenging method. Loop scavenging method uses carefully shaped and positioned transfer port to direct the flow of fresh mixture towards the combustion chamber as it enters the cylinder. The fuel air mixture strikes the cylinder head and then follows the curvature of the combustion chamber and then it then is deflected downward. This not only prevents the fuel air mixture from traveling direct, directly out the exhaust port but also creates a swirling turbulence which improves combustion efficiency, power and economy. Usually a piston deflector is not required. So this approach has a distinct advantage over the cross flow scheme. Third is uniflow, uniflow scavenge matter. In a uniflow engine, the mixture or charge air in a case of diesel enters at one end of the cylinder controlled by the piston and the exhaust exist, exit at the other end controlled by an exhaust valve or piston. The scavenging gas flow is therefore in one direction only, hence the name uniflow. The valve arrangement is common in on-road and off-road and stationary two-stroke engines. Now moving forward, further, let us first discuss the working cycle of two-stroke SI engine.
In two stroke SI engine, a cycle is completed in two stroke of a piston or one complete revolution of a crankshaft, that is 360 degree. In this engine, the suction stroke and exhaust stroke are eliminated and ports are used instead of valves. Petrol is used in this type of engine. The two stroke SI engine completes the cycle of events like induction, compression, power and exhaust in one revolution of the crankshaft or two complete piston strokes. Now first stroke consists of combustion, compression and transferring process. The piston moves down the cylinder and initially uncovers the exhaust port, releasing the burnt gases to the atmosphere. Simultaneously, the downward movement of the other side of the piston compresses, compresses the previously filled mixture of air and atomized petrol in the crankcase. Further outward movement of the piston will uncover the transfer port and the compressed mixture in the crankcase will then be transferred to the combustion chamber side of the cylinder. The situation in the cylinder will then be such that the fresh charge entering the cylinder will push out any remaining burnt products of the combustion. This process is generally referred to as cross-flow scavenging. Now, second stroke consists of intake, pre-compression and transfer process. The crankshaft rotates, moving the piston in the direction of the cylinder head. That is, piston starts moving from BDC to TDC. Initially, the piston seals off the transfer port and then a short time later, the exhaust port will be completely closed. Further inward movement of the piston will compress the mixture of air and atomized petrol to about 1 7th to 1 8th of its original volume. At the same time, as the fresh charge is being compressed between the combustion chamber and the piston head, the inward movement of the piston increases the total volume in the crankcase, so that a depression is created in this space. About halfway up the cylinder stroke, the lower part of the piston skirt will uncover the inlet port and a fresh mixture of air and petrol prepared by the carburetor will, in, will be induced in the crankshaft chamber. Just before the piston reaches the top of the top of its stroke, a spark plug situated in the center of the cylinder head will be timed to spark and ignite the dense mixture. The burning rate of the charge will rapidly raise the gas pressure to a maximum, maximum of about 50 bar under full load. The burning mixture then expands, forcing the piston back along its stroke with a corresponding reduction in cylinder pressure. This video will give a clear picture of how a two-stroke SI engine works. Now considering the condition underneath the piston in the crankcase, with the piston initially at the top of its stroke, fresh mixture will have entered the crankcase through the inlet port. As the piston moves down its stroke, the piston skirt will cover the inlet port and any further downward movement will compress the mixture in the crankcase in preparation for the next charge transfer into the cylinder and combustion chamber space. Now the second stroke is going to start. Now, let us discuss about the working cycle of two-stroke diesel engine. Diesel engine relies solely on the heat of compression for ignition. Intake begins when the piston is near the bottom dead center. Air is admitted to the cylinder through ports in the cylinder wall. All two-stroke diesel engine requires artificial aspirated to operate and will either use a mechanically driven blower or a turbo compressor to charge the cylinder with air. In the early phase of intake, the air charge is used also used to force out any remaining combustion gases from the preceding power stroke, a process referred to as scavenging. As the piston rises, the intake charge of air is compressed near top dead center. Fuel is injected resulting in combustion, chamber, combustion due to the charge's extremely high pressure and heat created by compression, which drives the piston downward. As the piston moves downward in the cylinder, it will reach a point where the exhaust port is open to expel the high pressure combustion gases. 
However, most current two-stroke diesel engine uses top-mounted poppet valve and uniflow scavenging. Continued downward movement of the piston will expose the air intake port to in the cylinder wall and the cycle will start again. And this is a working cycle of two stroke CI engine. And that's it for today's class. Thank you very much for being with me till the end. I hope you all liked this lecture and would have gained some basic information regarding the operating cycle of how two stroke engine works. My, my next lecture will be on IC engine components. That is I will discuss about the different essential parts or components which forms the building block of internal combustion engine. Please hit the like and subscribe button below and stay connected for the future classes. Bye bye see you all again in my next lecture. Thank you.